Google just released Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is the first member of the 2.5 family. This video is going to be a very first look at the model. Based on the benchmarks that they have shared, this thing is a beast. It is able to outperform almost all the other Frontier model on key benchmarks. Gemini 2.5 Pro is really good at coding and it's a reasoning model. So before it generates a response, it has this chain of thought, very similar to other reasoning models that we have seen. But this is the first version of a reasoning model in the Pro family. And the coding abilities seems to be really great because it's able to generate these complex games in a single shot. I'll show you a couple of examples later in the video. It's also a multi-model in nature, so it has image understanding and it has a long context window of 1 million tokens. Long context is very important for huge tasks, especially when it comes to coding. Long context gives the model the ability to understand larger codes and make it actually a lot more useful compared to smaller context models. And from what I have seen so far, it's really good at coding. The model is already available if you have Gemini Advanced subscription. This is called 2.5 Pro Experimental, and it's going to be also available in AI Studio at launch. Okay, so before testing the model, let's have a quick look at this blog post. I had earlier access to the blog post. So they say that today we are announcing Gemini 2.5, our most intelligent AI model. 2.5 release is an experimental version of 2.5 Pro, and this is state of the art on a wide range of benchmarks and also on Chatbot Arena leaderboard. Google has been testing this model, I think under a pseudonym. It is also a thinking model, so it uses its chain of thought to reason before generating the final output. They say that we have explored ways of making AI smarter and more capable through techniques like RL and chain of thought prompting. But then this seemed to be a little different than how the other models are trained. So here they say we have achieved a new level of performance by combining a significantly enhanced base model with improved pros training. And going forward, they plan to build these thinking capabilities directly into their models. Okay, there is this one part in the blog post which I still am trying to understand, which says without test time techniques that increase cost like majority voting, 2.5 Pro leads in math and science benchmarks like GBQA and ME. So not sure what exactly mean by without test time techniques. In terms of benchmarks, this is the first model that is able to achieve 18.8% on humanity's last exam. This is supposed to be a very tough exam. The previous high score was 14% by O3 Mini on high setting. Also for GBQ at Diamond, which is a scientific benchmark, this leads all the rest of the models in performance. So on the benchmarks, it definitely seems to be very a strong model. And Google is specifically highlighting the reasoning capabilities and coding abilities, which we are going to test later in the video. But for reasoning and general knowledge and mathematics, it is a state of the art at the moment. And also for coding, so it has advanced coding capabilities. According to them, they have focused on coding performance and the Gemini 2.5 have achieved a big leap or 2.0 with more improvements to come. 2.5 excels at creating visually compelling web pages and agentic code capabilities along with the code transformations and editing. It's going to be extremely helpful in something like Cursor or one of these other coding IDEs because of its long context window. On the SUI benchmarks, it's able to score almost 64% with a custom agent setup that they have implemented. And the coding capabilities show up in some of the demos that they have shared. So here is an example of data analysis using Plotly Express. It's able to think through the problem that it's going to solve, comes up with the solution, and then the implementation looks pretty great, especially the plots are visually appealing. So it's not only able to perform tasks like creating games, but you can use it for actual data analysis, which is a really useful case for these large reasoning models. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of quick tests. I'm using Gemini Advanced. 
and here I'm selecting 2.5 Pro Experimental. But as I said, by the time this video is released and the model is announced, it's going to be available in AI Studio as well. So first, we're going to just quickly test its reasoning capabilities. So I'm going to provide a modified version of the trolley problem. In this case, there are five dead people on the track and you're standing next to a lever that can divert the trolley onto another track where one living person is tied up. Now, normally what happens is that in the unmodified or the original trolley problem, five these five people are also alive. And most of the time what I have seen is these models will just assume it's the unmodified or the original trolley problem. But for a reasoning model, it should be able to pay close attention to that people are already dead. So here it's showing its thinking process. It actually takes some time, so this is good. Now let's quickly go through the thinking process before looking at the final output. So it says, identify the core scenario. The user has presented the classic trolley problem ethical dilemma. So the runaway trolley, five people on the track, already dead. So it seems like it already identified that core issue. Recognizing the ethical nature, this isn't a problem with a single right answer. It's a thought experiment designed to explore different ethical frameworks and moral intuition. So then analyzing the user specific wording, the problem specifies that five people on the main track are already dead. This is a crucial deviation from the standard trolley problem where five people are alive, right? So it seems like it is able to reason through it, which is good. Okay, so here's the final answer. This is a variation in the classic trolley problem thought experiment. However, you have introduced a critical change. The five people on the main track are already dead. So then it says, let's break it down, break down the consequences in this specific scenario. So do not pull the lever. The trolley continues on its path and run over five bodies that are already deceased. So the outcome is going to be zero living people die as a result of this choice. If you do pull the lever, then the outcome is one living person dies as a result of this choice, right? So it's really good to see that it actually is able to reason through the problem rather than just looking at its training data and trying to solve the original trolley problem. So this is very encouraging. Okay, we're going to try the Schrodinger's cat, but in this case, the cat is already dead. So let's see if it's able to solve this. Again, it actually focused on that fact that the cat is already dead before being placed in the box. So I think it will be able to reason through it pretty accurately. Yeah, and you can see that in the final response, it says the, the probability of cat being alive in the boxes when the box is open is 0%, right? So, so far so good. I'm going to be doing some more tests on the misguided attention benchmark, which specifically focuses on testing the reasoning capabilities and logical deductions of these reasoning models. But so far, I'm, I'm really happy with the performance that I'm seeing. Okay, so we're going to test the coding abilities. And one of the things that Google highlighted in the blog post was its ability to create visually appealing web apps, right? So I'm going to use this prompt, code a modern Langdon page using HTML, CSS, JS, and put everything in a single file. I have tested this on a number of different LLMs. So far, DeepSeek V3, uh, the new version, was able to actually give me the best looking website. So right now it's reasoning through it, and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so here's the website it created. The link seems to be working. Now, it's a relatively small website with just a couple of sections, but the basic functionality for landing page is there. So here's one more coding test that we will do. As I, and as I said, more comprehensive testing is going to be coming up soon. So use JavaScript to create an animation of a falling letters with realistic physics. The letters should appear randomly at the top of the screen with varying sizes, then fall under Earth's gravity, have collision detection based on their actual uh, letter, letter shapes, interact with other letters, ground and screen boundaries, and have density properties similar to water, dynamically adapt to the screen changes, and have a black background. And I wanted to put everything into a single HTML file. Now, so here it started the thinking process, understanding the core request, identifying the key components, is going to use HTML structured, CSS styling, and the logic is going to be in JavaScript. 
because that's what exactly we asked it to put together. So it's going through the reasoning process and it, I think the plan that it came up will potentially work, we'll see. But the chain of thought that this model shows is a lot more comprehensive compared to what we see from the OpenAI models. And basically within the chain of thought, it is showing us how the actual implementation is going to look like. So I'm actually very curious what the output is going to look like. It is still generating the code for us. For some reason, it actually put an MIT license here. So this is pretty interesting. Okay, so I had to run this again because it got stuck, but here's the updated thought process. And now we have the updated code base. Let me run this and let's see if it actually is able to fulfill all our requirements or not. Okay, so we're going to open this new web editor. And yeah, seems like the numbers are falling down. These are different shapes and sizes. The collision detection seems to be working. Let's see if it can adopt to changes in the screen size. Seems like it, this is working fine. The first vibes of this model is, is, is it's definitely good at coding. I'll have to do a lot more thorough testing to see if it holds up. So, so far the benchmarks looks great. And I think we have a model that is going to be competing with Claude Sonnet when it comes to coding, especially if you look at the benchmarks like Aider Poly, uh, uh, Glot, uh, Sweep Bench, Live Coding Bench, especially if you are considering a single attempt at, at pass at one, right? So it seems to be a strong coding and reasoning model, but more comprehensive tests to show the actual performance. So do check it out and let me know what you think about this model after testing and what you are able to build with it. More comprehensive video is going to be coming out pretty soon. This was just very quick look. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.